Hello, I'm Craig McLean and welcome to episode 24 of the Mark 1 Escort RS2000 Reassembly. Unfortunately, this isn't going to be the most interesting of episodes. Now, I know some people maybe will find it interesting. I got quite a surprise when I did the last uh, wiring episode where a lot of people actually commented and said that they found it really helpful and really interesting and they would like to see more. So yeah, maybe some people will find it interesting, but I understand it's not for everybody. I've been putting it off for a long time now, wiring. It's not something I've particularly enjoyed. It's now actually, as I speak, all complete. It's took a lot of work, because as you know, I've updated the wiring loom and brought it into the 21st century, made it hopefully a lot safer. It's took a lot of work to incorporate all the additional fuse boxes and everything that's been required. Um, but obviously it's been a big improvement. It's made a big improvement to the wiring loom. Uh, and if it's something you want to do, it may be of some help. So yeah, like I say, this episode will feature mostly wiring and I'm hopefully going to get the brakes bled towards the end as well. Uh, because my plan is to try and start commissioning sections of the car one part at a time rather than put everything together in one day and then have to maybe iron out loads of little additional, uh, loads of little uh, individual issues. I'm hoping I don't get many issues, but you just don't know. It doesn't matter how well you build a car, there's always issues that you just didn't foresee. Hopefully there won't be many, as I say, but uh, we'll soon find out. So I'm going to start with the brakes, hopefully at the end of this episode, get them bled. Now I'm going to start putting fluids in. I'm going to start hopefully building up towards having it running in the next couple of months. So we'll start with some more wiring, unfortunately. So a few people have mentioned in the comments that they obviously think that the car is pretty much finished and that I'm nearly there and, and you know, we, we haven't got many episodes left kind of thing. Well, I thought I would just go through a bit of a list I've got of stuff that is still to do. There is probably more still to do than what you would imagine. So in no particular order, I still need to fit the fuel pump filters and pipe work the fuel and i haven't touched the fuel lines are in from back to front the copper fuel lines but i haven't connected anything up so that's still to do there's a bit more wiring to do i've done a lot of wiring recently which i'm going to cover probably on the next video uh exactly what i've done but there's a bit more still to do including fitting of the dash switches so i'll cover that again in a future video uh, i've got the power steering to fit and obviously steering rack uh stoke switches all the rest of it all that's still to fit including the steering wheel um i still need to fit the steering rack to go with the steering column so that's another thing that's still left to do the exhaust still to fit when it arrives now the exhaust should be arriving any week now and in fact probably hopefully this week or maybe even next um the wheels obviously you know about the wheels the wheels are coming very very shortly uh, i think in the next three weeks we should see the wheels here so I've still got the um, the studs to fit and then the wheels can be fitted. And obviously once I get them fitted, I can set the ride heights, I can set the camber and I can set the tracking. That'll be a really, really nice time when I get it on the on the ground outside. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I need to bleed the brakes. I don't think that should take much doing, but yet yeah, still needs done. Um, the driver, driver's side door still needs built up. I still need to fit the door card, the window um the door handles etc as you've just seen me do on the other side which looks absolutely brilliant i'm pleased with that um the heat vent pipe work the vents are in the dash but i haven't got the pipes and the elbows yet that go from the vents down to the heater so that's still to do uh where are we at uh the dash trims the dash trims that run along the front of the dash there i'm going to do them in carbon i'm going to copy the original shapes and do them in carbon i think that'll look really good i love carbon so yeah, I'll let you see that at a later date as well. Uh, gearbox oil, diff oil, and engine oil, obviously coolant as well. That's all to uh, to fill up and set the levels. Um, we've got the engine breather still to do. Obviously, we've got the breather in the side of the block, which is taped up at the minute. You can just see down there. And obviously we need to fit one into the cam cover. And then we need a little catch tank mounted somewhere out the way. Uh, make it all nice and neat as I did with the coolant hoses so that's another little job washer jets as you can see there's no washer jets they need uh, they need fitted I haven't even got the holes for it I forgot to drill the holes through so unfortunately I am going to have to drill the holes and fit them I'll just have to touch up when I drill through and put a bit of uh, wax oil in behind uh, I need to fit, fit the dash clocks there's a bit of money money's in the, da in the dash clocks 
because I want the 140 mile an hour RS ones that I don't have. Because when I bought this shell, I pretty much bought a bare shell and a box of a few bits, which wasn't the best thing to do because I've had to basically order bloody everything. So, anyways, yeah, I've still got uh, I've still got that to to source and fit. Uh, we need to fit seat belts inside. We still don't have seat belts. I've got the centre clasps, but I don't have the seat belts. Again, when I get them, that's not a big job. Uh, fit a rear view mirror. We don't have a, a rear view mirror fitted as yet. Again, another small job. I just need to find one. Uh, rear armrests. So on the rear panels, we need we need to fit the little armrests onto them. I've got the leather covers for them. I just don't have the armrests yet. That's something else I need to source. Um, we need to obviously start the car up. Uh, resolve any issues when, when, once I come to start it up, including connecting the battery and the battery cables and resolving any electrical issues. Uh, and then obviously I need to get it MOT'd, uh, get a couple of miles on it and obviously get it rolling roaded. So yeah, there is still a little bit to do as you've can, as you just heard. So there'll still be quite a good few episodes to come. I know a lot of people were saying that they're, uh, that they're gutted about, uh, about the fact that it's coming towards an end. But I can promise you there still is quite a good few episodes. There still is quite a good few things to, to uh, concentrate on. So yeah, that's still all to come on future episodes. Right, in this episode, I'm going to have to concentrate on a bit of wiring again because I've been putting it off and putting it off and it's getting to the point where it's going to end up holding up the starting of the car and getting it finished because I've got a fair amount to do. I've been doing a little, a bit, a little bit behind the scenes and this is part of the wiring. So basically, I have mounted a fuse box under the dash in the same location that the original one that would have been on the bulkhead under the bonnet is mounted but i've mounted it on the inside under the dash and i mounted the fuse box on the bulkhead and because all the cables come in at the sides i made it as neat as i possibly could but i looked under the dash and i just thought i don't like the look of it it's just there's you know there's cables coming in at the sides and it just doesn't look as nice as i would like it to look so i've made this this is a little shield which is an interference fit onto the lid of the fuse box and it basically wraps around and hides all the connections I'll let you see it on in a second. It just neatens the job right up. Uh, and the good thing about it is I've got this flat section on the side that I can put my little labels on to say what each fuse is for. So I think that'll look really neat when I get it on. But I'll let you see that uh, in a couple of seconds when I get it primed and painted and fitted properly. And this is the fuse box in question that I was obviously just talking about. And that's the shield fitted. And it just nicely hides all them cables that loop in at the side. And as you can see, we've got two, three sets of two fuses. So the top two, 10 amp, are main beam. They're, they're fused from side to side, fused left and right. Um, doesn't matter which one's which. Obviously, if, if a main beam goes, you'll just have a look at one of them two fuses. Dip beam in the centre, again, same again, 10 amps. And at the bottom, we've got side lights. Now, that's left, right, and it's front and rear. So that does your tail lights as well. Uh, that's all gone in quite neatly now. I think that's a nice, neat solution to uh, to a... Well, it wasn't a massive problem. It's just me being finicky, I suppose. I didn't like all the cables on shore. And I just think now that they're all loomed in and we've got a, a shield hiding all the links, that just looks so much better. So, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm really happy with that. So a little bit more progress on wiring. Again, we're under the dash in that location I showed you in quite a good few episodes ago now. And we have this fuse box here. This is the switched fuse box. So basically when you, when you switch the ignition on, this fuse box will then become live. And it, the auxiliary supply you can see on the right there, that actually feeds everything off the ignition switch that used to feed this fuse box. So what I've done is I've basically put this fuse box in the middle because that white wire on, on the right there, that came from the ignition switch and feeds absolutely all sorts of stuff. It feeds uh, the heater, the, the wipers, you name it. There's a lot on that circuit and there was no fuse. So now it is fused. I think I've put a 20 amp on that, if I remember rightly, a 20 or a 30 amp, I can't remember. The cable is uh, capable of accepting it, so that's good. And then I've got my relay feeds. What I mean by that is when you turn the ignition on, all the things that you want to come on with your ignition, these uh, this fuse here, it's only a little five amp, 
feeds the coils on the relay so it goes from here and it goes through various other things as well so for example for the heated windows which come off the main fuse box so they're the, they're the main feeds for them uh, the front heated window is on a relay but the coil feed will come from this 5 amp fuse through the switch on the dash and then it'll power up the relays for front heated window, rear heated window etc and then the one for the coolant fan which is here that obviously goes through the temperature switch on the water rail so when you turn the ignition on it just doesn't it doesn't just bring on all this equipment there's other things in the circuit as well to prevent it coming on until it's required uh, so yeah all them relays are now connected front heated window power steering coolant fan and fuel pump i've got another one to mount for the rear heated window um, all these circuits here are connected up now and I've also got an additional fuse box which I've run the cigarette light feed through that's on another 10 amp because the cigarette lighter comes straight off the ignition and again had no fuse it now does it now has a 10 amp interior light bit of a story with the interior light the interior light again comes straight off the for, off the permanent live on the ignition and this is exactly why I'm fitting fuses because that cable had melted previously and the owner had made a bit of a bodge, or whoever had had the car prior had made a bodge to the wiring, made a right mess of it, and that was because there's no fuse. That's now got a 5 amp fuse in that interior light feed, so if there's any ever a problem in future, that little 5 amp fuse pops and doesn't uh, destroy your car. So yeah, that's more things connected up under the dash. We're not finished yet. Like I say, I've got the other relay to feed. Coming from this switched fuse box i do need to put a feed in for the stereo i am fitting the stereo although it won't be anything larry it'll be a nice head unit and some speakers hidden somewhere completely out of sight because i do not want speakers on shore i want them to be heard but not seen um i can't think of anything oh sorry reverse lights the reverse lights are to come off this switch fuse box as well so all really low power consumption items to come from that box all the big heavy duty stuff is coming off the main one which takes a live straight from the main straight from the uh, solenoid on the main incoming uh, positive so yeah that's a little bit more really awkward progress under the dash i am i'm actually my head is on the accelerator pedal as we speak and it is not comfortable so yeah that's a little bit more progress on wiring another little bit of progress under the car is the fitment of the speedo cable speedo cable is now all fitted in p clip nice and neatly i just need the clip to hold it onto the gearbox on the drive on the gearbox i've also run the reverse switch cable with it uh, that runs along and again follows the same route up the bulkhead and through the bulkhead hole so yeah that's another little bit of progress underneath that i've been getting on with another small delivery from gs escorts i've got a set of 16 uh, M12 by 1.5 studs. My first impression was, oh, they're a bit long. I'll probably have to cut them down a bit. But when you t uh, when you screw on one of the proper wheel nuts, that'll be very similar to the ones that'll be coming with the wheels. And you imagine that the flange is the width of that serrated section. The wheels do actually have a bit of an inbuilt spacer as well, especially the front ones to get all the offsets correct. So I don't think they'll need cut down by much as it happens. And the more threads you can have inside the nut, the better so yeah i'm sure they'll be absolutely fine so i've got 16 of them and i've also got the fitting kit so i can finally fit the wiper motor which is the next job these are second hand the collars but i've had them out the bag and i can pretty much tell they're going to clean up really nice i did see a brand new set of these on ebay and it was like 60 quid and i was like no not a chance i'm not paying 60 quid for two little slithers of aluminium probably is what they are so yeah i've got them there they just need a little polish up all the rubber gaskets and everything so we can get on now and get the wiper motor fitted well that's our wiper assembly now fitted absolutely no problem to fit really the chrome parts have come up really really nice as you can see absolutely nothing wrong with them at all um probably the only difficult part was I could tell before i even put the me mechanism in that there wasn't a hell of a lot of threads on this side uh, compared to that side so getting this nut to get a grip and tighten up was a little bit tricky but once it got a grip i managed to get it uh, tightened up that's now fitted nice the motor lines up with the bracket under the dash and it's connected up now and uh, time will tell whether it's connected properly but it's connected 
so we'll get that tested when we come to power it up couple of other little bits of progress on the wiring we're probably at the end of the wiring road now i know you can see there we've still got all the clocks to connect up we've still got switches to fit but all the relays and all the fuse box is now fully connected i've got one more relay to do rather i have got one more relay to do which i'm going to do this friday and that is the wiring as far as i'll be going with it for now it's almost there so another little job i did at the weekend was i fitted a proper iso connector for a stereo that's all loomed in we've got the cables there for speakers that's got a permanent live a switched live and an earth going right back to the fuse box for now that'll just be getting tucked tucked up behind here because a center console and a stereo is going to be something i'm going to install at a later date i don't have a center console yet and it's not essential right now the essential thing now is to get the car finished looking right and driving nicely and then after uh you know when it's finished and it's rolling roaded and i've got a few miles on it i'll start looking at little jobs like fitness and center console a stereo hiding some nice speakers somewhere because like i said before i want the i want the speakers completely hidden i would like to fit a mark ii glove box because i just think they're a really nice addition and give, give you a bit more storage uh, and i would like to do a boot liner of some description uh, I don't really like just having the uh, the, the carpets or, the, or rather like the plasticky vinyl covering that came on the boot floor originally. I'd like to I'd like to make a nice a nice tidy feature out of the boot, and make it so it looks really nice and tidy. I've got a couple of ideas in mind that I'll probably share with you in future. But as for wiring, yes, we're nearly there. I do also need a sub loom for the hazard warning lights because that's going to be the switch over here uh, i keep finding them on ebay they go for silly silly money and i always say i'm not paying that for what is a very very small wiring loom but i think i'm gonna to have to bite the bullet and just get one bloody board because i'm gonna need it so yeah we've got uh, clocks to fit switches to fit the steering column will obviously have the indicator stock etc on other than that we're done with wiring everything's connected up everything is uh loomed in i've got a little tiny bit of neatening up to do in behind the dash there is a lot of cables in there but as you can see i have spent a good bit of time already and dressed them in and i think that looks pretty good for the amount of cables that's in there uh, but i am going to spend a little bit more time and neaten them up even further but yeah i am definitely pleased with how that's turned out in there because that would look like a rat's nest if i hadn't spent the time i have dressing it all in there's a lot a lot of cables for all the relays and fuse boxes but yeah, I've got to be honest, I am so, so happy to have wiring behind me. It's not a job I've really enjoyed. I know I'm a spark by trade, but this is very, very different. This is getting your head in the footwell, under the dash, soldering iron in awkward places, crimps in awkward places, dressing cables in, in, in areas that you can barely get your hands in, never mind how else. It's not a nice job, and I've got to be honest, I'm pleased it's done. The only issue now will be if when we come to power it up, if we have any major issues, which I hope we don't, but if we do, it's going to be quite tricky to trace a lot of the cables because they are well loomed in. But we'll keep our fingers crossed and we'll hope that everything works as it should. And uh, hopefully we won't have to re readdress any major wiring. So I'm going to leave wiring there because I've kind of completed it now. Uh, the fuse box underneath, we've added, I've added a couple more circuits into them since the video I showed you a couple of minutes ago. I've now added uh, a fuse in for the radio, which is 10 amp. I've added a fuse in for the washer jets, which is 5 amp. I've added a fuse in for the uh, reverse lights, which is also 5 amp. So other than the power steering, which looking into recently needs a 50 amp supply, unfortunately, that won't be able to be fed from my fuse boxes that I've got under the dash because they're 30 amp max. But we'll worry about that when it arrives in a later episode. So anyways, that's wiring for now, and like I say, I'm bloody pleased it's behind me. While we're on the subject of wiring, this is an original part of, a, of the loom for the rear heated window. This loom, loom is completely unmolested. It's in brilliant condition, no signs of any deterioration or anything with it, but it's always worth checking things because this original loom, the relay part of it, has never been connected up from right there uh, has never been connected up correctly from new the black cable by my thumb there 
that comes from the switch and tells the relay to energize to pull in and make the contact between the red and the black at the bottom there so them two are made so basically that's the live coming in from the fuse box it'll go through the through the relay out on the black at the bottom and off to the rear window the black one there where my finger is and the red one were the wrong way around when i looked into it and i checked it and i um did, con did continuity checks on it etc the relay will never have been doing anything in this circuit from new that that black cable there from the switch has basically been powering the rear window up since this loom was new without even going through the relay the relay has had absolutely no part in that circuit whatsoever so i've now swapped the red and the black over so now so that the black brings in the relay and the red the bigger fat red cable supplies cable through to the rear heated window but it just goes to show even original new old stock parts can still be very wrong right guys last bit of progress for this episode is i'm gonna get the uh, brakes bled up and hope that everything goes according to plan so before i go any further off camera i've just been around every single joint making sure they're absolutely perfectly tight uh, including all the bleed valves make sure they're all closed that's all done uh, what i'm going to do next is remove these trumpets just to get better access because i wanted to use silicon brake fluid i've got silicon brake fluid in the mini unfortunately the master cylinder there the willwood master cylinder that takes dot three brake fluid of which i've got a liter of so i looked everywhere and it appears that you can't get silicon dot three fluid for whatever reason not entirely sure so i've had to go for the old-fashioned original stuff which as everybody knows takes paint off so i'm a bit nervous of doing it because i don't want to get any brake fluid anywhere near the paintwork which is my original reason for wanting to use silicon like i say i used it in the mini and it was brilliant but i can't actually use it in this application unfortunately so yeah i'll take the trumpets off and then we can get better access to top it up and then i'll put the trumpets back on when i'm happy we're all good so yeah let's crack on with bleeding the brakes so there's our trumpets removed the cylinders on the master cylinder have been filled with brake fluid i'll be taking them caps off in a minute i'm just leaving them on for now to keep uh, oxygen out etc and crap and then uh, we'll get pumping brake bleeding take one with the glamorous assistant <laughs> starting with the rear Let's get it set up. Open it up now. Yeah. Wait a sec. No, I've already pushed it down. Yeah, we've just had so much square through. Right, I'll close it now. Close it now, alright. Right. Right, open it again. Close it. Yeah. Open it. Close it. Yeah. Close. Right, well it's close anyway, so it can pump away whenever you're ready. Down. Right, that's limit there. Right, close. Up. Yeah, close now. Right, I'm ready when I need that. Uh open. Facts! Side is somewhere, 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 yeah. Can do because the top's obviously the highest point. There. Highest point, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, open the bugger up. That's it, it's open. Lock Close. It. Right, close it. Yeah. Did anything come up? Yeah. What, just fluid? Just or? fluid, I think. Right. We've got brakes. We've definitely got brakes. Right, we now have an absolute perfect brake pedal. It's absolutely solid. I would say it only moves about an inch, inch and a half. Uh, brilliant, that didn't go too bad really. We did have one little leak on the static brake test, which was the passenger side front flexi hose where it joins the copper pipe. It just needed a nip up. The problem is because it's a Goodrich hose, it doesn't 
lock into the insert on the inner wing so when you try and tighten it up the full pipe spins and it's quite difficult to, to grip but we got there in the end we've got it we've got it uh, gripped up and it now doesn't leak so we now have a perfect pedal all i need now to finish them pedals is a proper set of the rubber covers and we can get them uh, chavy covers off so i'll explain in a little bit more detail as to what we've just been doing there and what brake bleeding is all about so basically on all calipers or cylinders you have a bleed nipple on these calipers there's two there's one on the top one in the middle on uh, quite a lot of calipers just have one bleed nipple and what you do is you fill your master cylinder with fluid somebody sits in the car pumps the pedal while these valves are in the closed position you have a pipe coming off the end of it because you just take this little cap off you remove that little cap and you put a pipe on into it into a bottle and then basically you open it by turning it well it'll be anti-clockwise is it uh yeah anti-clockwise um, and then it releases the the air out through the um through the valve into your into your tub and then you, you then close the valve again pump it up keep pumping it up while the valve's closed and then opening it and letting the air out and when you see pure fluid coming out your tube into your into your tub that is when you've got all the air out the system just like bleeding a radiator in your house you need the air out and only fluid in and then you should end up with an absolutely solid pedal and that's us all back together finished off and we now have perfect working brakes so that's another little uh, another little step closer to getting this car on the road so a big shout out today to my best mate Andy buchanan you'll have seen him in the video footage before there for giving me a hand bleeding these brakes yep fantastic pleased with that well guys that's another episode drawn to a close and that is the end of wiring thankfully it's now fully wired Everything that needs to be in there that I wanted to add to the loom is added to the loom. There is still odds and sods like the indicator stokes, the bit to connect, the ignition barrel, bits and bobs, um, the, the, the clocks, the main six clock dials, they'll all to be, all to be to connect up at a later date. But the main wiring harness in behind the dash in the hard to reach areas is thankfully complete. It's took a hell of a lot of hours. I estimate well over 100 hours I've put into wiring easily over 100 hours uh, it's it's been it's been pretty boring if i'm honest i know that i'm an electrician by trade but it's not something i've overly enjoyed anyways i'm hoping it won't be delayed by too much but the next episode may very well be delayed i was well well ahead with the episodes i had weeks and weeks advance of the episodes going out i had two videos ish ahead before you were seeing videos and I'm not going to badmouth the two companies that have kind of uh, led to the backlog, I suppose, the, uh, the slowing down of the YouTube videos and slowing down of the progress. It's the two very, very good companies, but they promised me, they both promised me parts in a certain time frame, and both of them are way, way over that now. So unfortunately, that's meant that I'm well behind with where I'd like to be. I'm well behind with videoing, which means there might be a delay in the next episode coming out i'll try my best to get it out as soon as possible and i, I would imagine if there is a delay it'll maybe only be a week or so uh, but what what i can promise is the next episode should be a very very special one the items that i'm waiting for are items that will take the car i think to the next level i really do uh, if one of the items in particular turn out how i'm hoping i think it'll make I think it'll make this car be way, way past my dreams, past anything I ever dreamed of. But hopefully we'll find out very shortly just how that turns out. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I understand this one have been the most interesting of episodes, but please carry on watching because there is definitely better content to come. So thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.